Hello again, my name's Diane and I design and make patchwork quilts and today I'd like to share with you some tips how to get the most out of your batting and if that's something you might be interested in, please continue watching. So I always use 100% cotton batting, it's just a personal preference. I like the way it feels, I like the way it sews and it's good for the environment and I like that too. And I always try and use the same manufacturer and that's because of the way I use it. Let me explain further. I've just been on Amazon to have a look at up-to-date prices of batting, the sort that I buy. So typically I might make a quilt that is probably 60 inches square. I would get away with buying some cotton batting that is 72 inches by 90 inches and today's price for that on the sort that I buy is £19.99. However, if I was to buy a piece of cotton that was 90 inches by 108 inches, that is also £19.99. So if you think you're going to cut off the surplus and save it, then the cost is the same, but there's a whole lot more left over for the bigger size. And I'll tell you what I do with the pieces that I cut off. And so it's not rocket science. So the larger pieces I join together using a large zigzag stitch on my machine. I just butt them together, straight edges against straight edges. And this is why I always try and use the same manufacturer so that I'm always joining like with like. So if there's any differences in the manufacturing process, it won't show up. So that's how I use up the larger pieces. And as long as when you put your sandwich together, you follow the quilting instructions. So normally it says about four inches I think quilting density but I always tend to go a lot closer than that mine's probably about two and a half inches and I've never had any holes appearing or it falling apart so that's how I use the larger pieces and then the next sizes I will keep for things like bags if I want to make a quilted bag or if I'm going to use a quilted cushion anything like that so that's that size and then the last size the very tiny little bits I cut up into small squares, rectangles, pieces, and I put them into a cushion. I'm not quite sure why the camera's just disappeared on me. Fix that before we continue. Hey ho, me and technology. Anyway, <laughs> cushions. So there we are. It's, they're nice and dense when they're filled with 100% cotton batting, breathable, and they are biodegradable, which is great. So I like to use these in the garden. If we're going on picnics, they're great for in the car. Nice sturdy ones. And also, if you need a firmer cushion for anything else, it's also really good. So my husband wanted a lumber cushion, and I'll show you the process that I use making that with my leftover batting. And so I've made the lumber pro forma and it's made out of the cotton batting. It's quite heavy, so it just fits nicely into the middle of his back where he wants it. And this little quilt here lives on the back of our sofa at the moment. It's one I've made recently. It's called Autumn Breeze and I'll put a link to that below. And I'm thinking I'm going to make a cover using this fabric so that they'll match. So I've got some of this fabric left over. This is Damson and it's a William Morris print and it's called Strawberry Thief. And this is a Crimson and this is an Okra and it's Larkspur and that's also a William Morris print. And I'll show you the design. So this was the design of the quilt and now this is going to be the lumber cushion. Okay, let's get on and have a look. And there we go, that's all the pieces ready. So it's a little variable star in a lozenge shape. I'll sew this together and then I'll just put a little bit of a border in the damson just to preserve the points. And there we are, that looks really pretty I think. So it's 14 inches deep by 20 inches wide and I've had a little bit of fun with this bird fabric. So I've got a row of birds sitting along the bottom and I've made sure the direction will go in up each side across the top and coming down. Okay, so I'm going to find a piece of batting now, that size. Well, the batting was only just big enough, this scrappy piece of batting that I found in my stock. So I've sewn in the ditch around the outside. I secured it with spray adhesive. So now I'm going to trim it and then I'll find some backing and then I'll quilt it. Well it's all quilted and it's looking very nice. In fact it's looking a lot like a placemat and I'm going to make it look even more like a 
placemat because what I'm going to do is do some self binding over the front. So I'm going to turn it in on itself, iron it and then sew around the very edge and then when I make a pocket out of this I'm hoping just to get the tiniest little bit showing. So that's my next job. Well, I think that would make a really nice table mat for a winter's table. But now I'm going to turn it into the lumbar cushion. So I need to take this length of fabric, which is 20 inches, and then add 10 inches so I've got a 5 inch overlay. It's just going to be the simple envelope. So I've hemmed each edge of the envelope opening and I've attached each side on the shorter width. And as you can see, I've put a zigzag stitch there and it's a very narrow seam because I'm trying to retain that blue feature on the other side. So I have put a double row of stitch in there just to strengthen it. OK, so now I'm going to sew across the top and the bottom, double row again, and then put a zigzag stitch and we'll have a look and see if that lovely blue edging is there. So I did encounter a small problem because the cushion is made from 100% cotton batting. It is quite dense and it's long. And so because I had such a big overlay, in this envelope I was struggling to get it through so I've just undone each end a little bit and turned that back. Okay we'll have a look at it now. So that's that little problem solved now. There's enough fabric there so there's still there won't be any gap in the cushion was not going to be poking out so that's all sorted. That's the cushion finished. I'm really pleased with it. It's turned out nice and I'm really pleased with this edging. I sort of thought about that as I was going along. I will use it again but the next time I will make sure that I've got a, a wider piece of fabric so I can turn it over a little bit further so I've got more of a hem here. And like I say I've double stitched it so it's secure but apart from that it's a good job done. Well, I think it looks very nice in its new home. He's very pleased with it. So now I'm going to move on to another cushion. And this is also for my husband, Ken. And it is a heart pillow. And I'll show you that one. It's not a romantic gesture. <laughs> it's one that's been forged out of necessity. When I say he's slightly under the weather, um, he's actually waiting for a quadruple bypass. So uh, everything is crossed at the moment. The prognosis is 98% successful. So we try not to worry, try and stay positive. And one of the things that's recommended for the healing process afterwards is a sturdy heart cushion like this. And that's because I think the idea is you hold it across your chest like this and apparently there's some uh, coughing exercises you need to do to clear the lungs afterwards. So that's something that you use. And also just for getting up and down in chairs, they recommend that you basically hold your chest together by squeezing the cushion against you. And then it's also good for traveling in a car. So you'd have it, so you'd have it here and the seat belt will come across here and again, That'll be protection. So I've made a cover with a zip that's washable. So if you want to see how I've made this, please continue watching. So I've made the cushion. It's been made to fit across my husband's chest. And it's not really a job that you want to do for anybody, but needs must. And so now I'm going to make some covers for it. So I've just taken the pro forma of the heart and laid it on a fold line. And now I'm going to cut out this. It's just a thin cotton. And then I'm going to piece on top. So I've cut out the two hearts now. I'm not going to use batting because... I want it to be quite thin, thin enough to dry quickly. I think this will be in and out of the washing machine. And so what I'm just going to do is go through my scraps and just cover this. I'll have a look in my spare blocks and see if there's anything in there I can use. I think I need to put a zip down the side because he won't want anything catching across his chest. I'm not going to be too precious with this. I want it to be strong enough to hold together and to be used for its purpose. But 
I don't envisage wanting to keep this because um, this is a time in our lives that I think we want to move on from swiftly. Okay, I found this daisy block that has bees inside it and that covers a good portion of it. Although my husband's not really sort of a flowery kind of guy. So I'm not sure whether he'd appreciate that. So I'll ask him before I start. But the other one... I think we've got a result for it is Christmassy but I don't think he'll mind that it was a no a very strong no <laughs> to both of those designs and what he's asked for is just something plain so I've got a navy blue with a white polka dot and I'm just going to sew in one inch lines on both very simple so just chain piecing to save on thread listening to the radio while he watches the football so now I'm just going to sew around the white and leave a gap here for the zip and we'll have a look and see what it looks like. But that's it finished, nice and sturdy. So there we are, two cushions for the man in my life. And now I want to do something that is fun. So I'm looking forward to getting these three months out of the way and happier times ahead. And it will be Christmas almost then. So the next thing I'm going to make is something Christmassy. So if you hit the notification button, you'll catch that when it's posted. And that will be lovely, I hope. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks for spending your time with me. Take care of yourselves and each other. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.